You have just seen a UFO. To some people, these letters pose elements of fear because they represent an unknown threat. Unidentified flying objects, by definition, confront us with the unknown. But there is another way to interpret these letters. Unrestrained flying objects represent a very different story, an everyday story quite familiar to all of us. Unrestrained flying objects are people. Children and adults who ride in automobiles and don't use their lap and shoulder belt systems. How unusual we are. We fear the unknown. And yet we're apparently casual with predictable danger. Even when faced with nearly 30,000 deaths and hundreds of thousands of injuries to car occupants and traffic accidents each year. This is known. And although the number of highway deaths and injuries has dropped significantly in recent years, the toll is still too great. Experts agree that lap and shoulder belt systems properly worn by everyone could prevent more than 12,000 traffic deaths every year. Listen to these people. They don't believe that crashes can happen to them or that they might be hurt or killed. Oh, no, I don't want to be locked to the seat. My brother-in-law told me it's much better to be thrown clear of the car. Seat belts? What for? My folks don't wear them. Why should I? I don't really think they apply for me. I mean, the way I drive, you know, the grocery store, pick up the kids at school. I only make very short trips. Oh, I don't know. I've been driving a car for years without seat belts. Uh, I figure the odds are in my favor. You know, I've been okay so far, so, so why change? In the real world, these statements don't hold up very well. They may sound familiar to some of you, but that doesn't make them accurate. The fact is, statistics have proven that you should be built into the vehicle. It's your best chance for surviving the crash and being able to get out safely. Now, when you're driving, it's your decision that affects the safety of you and your passengers. It's your decision that sets the example. Don't be fooled by distance. Any trip is long enough. In fact, nearly 80% of all accidents occur within 25 miles of home. And don't think accidents won't happen to you. They do happen to confident, experienced, capable people. Just like you. By the thousands every year. Isn't it remarkable how quickly myths wilt when confronted with solid evidence? Isn't it even more remarkable how little the same evidence affects our driving habits? Or instills the buckle-up habit. In 1964, American car manufacturers began including front seat belt systems as standard equipment on all passenger cars. Yet after all the evidence has been compiled and presented since then, showing the effectiveness of belt systems, four out of five drivers still don't buckle up. Indeed, how little we learn from facts. The design of effective restraint systems is part of a larger safety research and development program. The commitment to greater automotive safety exists, but only the driver and his passenger can carry out and complete that commitment. General Motors has the largest and most advanced safety research and development laboratory in the world. This is tangible evidence of that commitment, which has grown with advancing technology. 
One of the most significant research developments has been the design and controlled observation of scientific test dummies. The man in charge of this critical test area, Mike Wolanin, has devoted his life to providing first-hand information about what can happen to real people in auto crashes. Since the early 1950s, test dummies have been used to examine crash reaction. Mike's group now maintains more than 60 anthropomorphic test dummies to satisfy constant GM safety testing. Just as drivers and passengers come in different shapes and sizes, so do the dummies, large men, small women, children, and infants. Anthropomorphic, a word used to describe this group's overall activities, the study of human life characteristics, the head, neck, chest, pelvis, and leg. These are the primary areas of interest in testing. The areas most likely to suffer serious injury in a crash situation. Test accuracy is critical, and repeatable accuracy takes time to develop. The neck construction on this dummy alone represents more than 15 years of research and engineering improvement. Very quickly, we learn that the test dummies represent much more than department store mannequins. There is a startling reality within their purpose. Green board. Start the tape. Tape time. For all of us who drive, this is serious business, as Jeff Pearson explains. In a frontal collision, the primary impact, the crush of the vehicle, takes place before you, the unrestrained occupant, ever hits anything. The car hits and begins to crush immediately, but everything inside the car that's unattached keeps on going until it hits something, like the windshield or the instrument panel. That's what we call the secondary impact. Belt systems are designed to couple you to the car so that you and the car both stop at the same time, with the car absorbing the direct punishment of the impact. Without the belt system, it's say hello to the steering wheel, the windshield, or the instrument panel, right now, with a full impact of the crash. Fasten belts can help avoid a crash, too. How? By helping the driver stay behind the wheel and keep control of the car when he has to make a fast turn or a quick evasive maneuver. Just how important is it to use the belt systems provided in today's cars. How important are 12,000 lives each year? Your friends, your family? How important is your life to you? There's no speculation involved. Properly restrained, more people will survive more accidents, avoiding death or serious injury. Without the restraint, you're going to bounce off the vehicle interior throughout the accident. It's just that basic. Automotive safety includes much more than a consideration of belt systems. Types and shapes of materials are given careful consideration during the design of a car's interior. For a reason, even with your belt on, there could still be movement and some contact with the vehicle interior. Jeff describes it this way. We work on the concept of the friendly interior. Lease has door handles and controls, energy absorbing steering column and instrument panels, and windshield glass that resist penetration. The total car is considered in attempting to reduce the chances of serious injury in those cases where the belt system may not be used. And let's be realistic. There will always be those people who don't use their belt system. It's important to know the right way to wear a seat belt. The lap belt should be worn low and snug on the hips. You don't want to wear the lap belt up around the waist of the midsection. In a frontal collision, it could cause you to slip or submarine beneath the belt and cause injuries to the abdominal area. Always check for too much slack in the shoulder belt. It doesn't have to be tight across your chest, but don't make it any more loose than necessary for driving comfort. Most GM systems 
have a comfort adjustment mechanism which allows the belt to lay across the shoulder with little or no observable tension. Our goal is to make belt systems that offer good protection, yet provide as much comfort as possible for the occupant. For many of us, convenience and driving safety still represent a choice. The choice between wearing or not wearing belt systems. Our attitudes determine the ultimate decision and the consequences of that decision for every occupant in the car, regardless of age. Children must rely on the adult's ability to make the right choice. Their safety, or lack of safety, depends on it. Without proper protection, an accident poses serious consequences for the child passenger. Even a sudden stop at low speeds can be enough to cause injury. Children's smaller frames require special attention. GM has designed special seats for both infants and children to provide that protection. The child or infant seat offers two very significant additional benefits. First, it frees the driver to devote full attention to driving without distractions. And second, it helps to develop the restraint habit at an early age, a good habit that should carry into these smaller passengers' adult lives when they'll be the ones making the right choice and setting the right example. Different restraints or different applications with a common objective. Protection for all occupants of automobiles. Why not seal ourselves in padded inflatable driving suits or equip our cars with sensors to automatically alert us to potential harm? <laughs> Space age stuff. Interesting, but not too practical just yet. But perhaps, perhaps we can use pieces of those two ideas, inflatable and sensors. The air cushion restraint system poses yet another method for vehicle occupant protection. The big push in present safety research is for effective passive systems that work automatically, requiring no action from the occupant. Federal regulations specify that by the 1984 model year, all new cars must be equipped with a passive restraint system. GM has explored many kinds of passive restraints in its efforts to develop systems that are safe, comfortable, and can be produced at reasonable cost. And this work is continuing. Automatic belt systems and air cushion restraint systems hold much promise. Restraint, the word, implies the use of good judgment. Restraint, the system, is your application of that good judgment. For safety's sake, use both whenever you enter your car. While we have only simulated crash situations with our unidentified dummies, they do happen with real, identifiable people every day. I don't want to be locked to the seat. What for? My folks don't wear them. I only make short trips. I've been okay so far. They're too much trouble. Get into the habit. Know how to wear it right. Set the example yourself. Intelligent creatures, we humans, we know what is real, and what is really an illusion. Restraints and the added safety they provide are as real as life itself. Mm -hmm.